kind of wanted to take a quick look back as we're looking forward to who the next manager was will be. I wanted to kind of take a look back on Dusty's time here, um, especially, especially the comments he went out on. Uh, I do think that Dusty, when it's all said and done, is going to be looked at as one of the Astros' best managers ever uh, just because of the results and kind of given the situation that he walked in on. But I do want to address, since we haven't had a chance yet, to address Dusty Baker's comments in his final press conference. Uh, he said that he knew it was his time uh, that this would be his final year here after some articles that were written about him. I assume that means the articles from uh, Chandler Rome. And he also said that uh, he felt that sometimes the media was unfair to him here. I got to say, I'm not surprised necessarily that Dusty Baker would have some thoughts on the coverage here. I am surprised that a guy who's a first ballot hall of famer, a guy who's a lifetime baseball guy, who's been around media criticism his whole career, he's no stranger to it. Um, I'm, I'm surprised to hear him have, or, or call out and have sensitivities to that. Are, are you guys as surprised to hear that he made comments on that on his way out? Yeah. My reaction is a, a little bit similar to yours. Um, to admit it, if nothing else, uh, that you have rabbit ears. How often have we heard from players, maybe less so from coaches, managers? Uh, I don't, back when there were newspapers, everybody, I don't read the papers. You know, I don't listen to podcasts or the radio. I'm immune to all that kind of stuff. Well, most of them aren't. They're human. No one likes to hear downgrading thoughts about oneself. I'm sure none of us do, even if it's meant as constructive criticism, which obviously in the media circus and in the online world, it's not always meant as constructive criticism. Uh, but to say that, uh, it did make me wonder and some back and forth with uh, a handful of other people that I've had. It does make you wonder if it factored into some of Dusty's decision making, that there was the occasional, hey, you know, F you particular writer or anyone else suggesting I manage this way or that, yeah, like I give you any credence at all that you might be right about the Yiner Diaz, Martin Maldonado playing time break, or I'm not going to play Chaz McCormick every day yet because I don't have to because I'm the manager. Um, and if so, that was a little bit derelict of duty. Uh, but in the overall, you hit it. Uh, four years, four league championship series, two World Series appearances, one World Series victory. Now, it may well be truth that a whole bunch of managers could have accomplished the same, right? The Astros had loaded teams. Did the Astros win the 2022 World Series because of Dusty Baker? They certainly did not. Did they win the 2022 World Series flat out in spite of Dusty Baker? I would say they certainly did not. They won it with Dusty Baker. And Dusty has the resume, right? You can go to the record books, the archives, the scoreboard, and it's it's in there. So um, I put in the column last week when, when Jerry Jones – uh, probably uh, uh, at least a sheet and a half to the wind at the time after the Cowboys had won their second straight Super Bowl in the early 90s. Uh, 500 coaches could have won with the roster we had, you know, which was a shot at Jimmy Johnson. And less than a month later, Jimmy Johnson's out as the, the head coach of the Cowboys, basically bleep you, Jerry Jones. Um, so, you know, that 500 managers could have gone to the last four league championship series with Dusty Baker. Uh, many could have. 500 seems ambitious, but we know this. Dusty Baker did go to those championship series and the World Series and won the World Series. Of course, A.J. Hinch, the three before that, had been the two World Series and won one. Uh, more than anything else, it's a testimony to the roster, the roster construction, and the players that they did all they did with both managers, um, but that Dusty was uh, a little bit red-assed on the way out. Yeah, it, uh, it did surprise me, at least his openness, and, and I applaud his openness. If that's what he felt, that's what he felt. For sure. I mean, he's listening. He's paying attention. Some of these guys don't go read all these internet blogs or whatever, but they will have somebody that works for them, let them know what's being talked about them out there. And that could be the case, you know, for Dusty as well. I think part of it too is when you're being second guessed and criticized and it, maybe if it's not going great, it's it's not as fun anymore, right? I mean, they, they kind of cruised last year and they didn't lose a game in the postseason until the World Series. There wasn't a lot of negativity out there for obvious reasons. But I think for Dusty, it's, 
I just won you guys a championship. I don't get the benefit of the doubt. We're a few months down the line into the next season and, and every decision I'm making is being second guessed. And I'm told I don't know what I'm doing or I'm too old. I'm, I'm sure that did rub them the wrong way, especially coming off what they just accomplished. It, it's a different world now. It's a different media cycle. Just because you won the World Series last year doesn't mean people are going to give you kids gloves the whole next season that that's just not how it works anymore so maybe that disappointed him and it was kind of a reality like this is going to continue if i keep managing and it wasn't i don't think it was an option his contract was up the astros didn't offer him another year so they just you know parted ways and, and that was that so i think it's part of it but some of that stuff should be questioned you know the things that he was doing it the fact that they moved kyle tucker down in the lineup during the postseason because he's struggling but Abreu was bad the whole regular season for the most part, and you hit him fourth or fifth and never moved him out of there. It's just, you know, something Brandon and I talked about. Like, you're going to do that to Tucker, who, you know, was arguably your best hitter all season, but with Abreu, who hadn't proven anything to you at that point, he'd never won a World Series with you. He was new to the team to give him that much respect and never move him. But the first sign of panic with Tucker, he goes down in the lineup. I, you know, Brandon and I both talked about it. We found that kind of curious. So there are some things that Dusty does that, you know, people aren't going to agree with. And, you know, he's getting to that age where he's just like, if it's not fun anymore and I don't think I'm being treated the way I want to be treated, then I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to take my ball and go home. And and that's fine. He has every right to do that. I could understand what he's accomplished and, and all the second guessing he had to deal with. Uh, I think, and look, the press conference was foremost a celebration, Dusty announcing his retirement as a manager, wants to keep a foot in the game in some capacity, wherever that may be. But I think an interesting follow-up, you know, if the if Pandora's box had been opened and after Dusty said, yeah, I think sometimes I was treated unfairly, second guessed, basically. Uh, Dusty, what was your specific reaction to when your general manager publicly on more than one occasion had the temerity to question your strategy or decision making? Is, is that different? Did that, you know, chap your hide? Um, I'd have been curious to hear the answer about that if it would have been measured, watered down, muted, or, okay, that box is open. Now let's really air it out. You guys are uh, making me think of a couple different things here. One is, Josh, you talked about the news cycle being different. I, I, th I think it's just it's when we're talking about Dusty Baker and him being a lifelong baseball guy and him being subject to criticism his entire career. Like we talk about, you know, uh, the news cycle changing. How about just news platforms changing? It's not just media; it's social media. So it's the criticisms are even that much more amplified, given the f that everyone with a voice is platformed now. Um, you know, and I think it's not just about admitting that he heard the criticisms that surprises me. It's about admitting that it influenced his decision. Now, whether or not that's the truth or not, I'm not real sure because as Josh alluded to, or as you alluded to, Charlie, maybe it's just a matter of him being allowed to leave on, leave on his own regard. And so we're just, you know, doing this uh, as, as a ceremonial thing. And if we're talking about it being Chandler's coverage of, you know, the, of, of, of you know, Dusty's lineups, I wonder how much of it was uh, the fact that his guys were talking to the media because it seemed like specifically in the, in the Chaz McCormick situation, Chandler Rome cited four separate sources within the organization that were talking about uh, you know, Dusty's use or, uh, or non-use of Chaz McCormick and his concern about his weight and just that people were talking. I, I do wonder how much of this was the fact that Dusty kind of saw that as a slight, you know, you talked about Dana Brown mentioning things outwardly towards the media, the fact that your players and, and maybe perhaps coaches were going to Chandler as well and talking about uh, why Chaz was not getting or was not in a, in a favorable eye with uh, Dusty Baker. What do you guys think about that? Uh, fair to wonder. I mean, look, if I was the manager, that kind of stuff would irritate me. But how much of it do you just flick off your shoulders? In the end, I'm the manager. You're a writer, podcaster, a commentator, and you are entitled to your opinion. I'd like to think that yours isn't pulled out of your backside. Different people you'll have different respect for because of tenure, your personal involvement 
with them professionally. Um, but in the end, if it is impacting any of your decision making, you know, that's where do you have the self awareness to to acknowledge that, uh, or you know, are you are you spitting into the wind on it? Or here's the line in the sand that I'm drawing. Um, if I was Dusty, you know, even Dana Brown's criticism was on. I'd be furious if my general manager ostensibly is calling me out publicly. My general manager, right? Keep that stuff inside the clubhouse or inside the the front office. And if we're going to hash it out and talk it out, and there's room for disagreement, and then in the end, as the field manager, I'll decide what the what the lineup is. Um, that uh, I, as, as I said, I, I'd have been furious if if I was the manager. Um, but big boy pants and all that and dusty 74 years old and a made man. And, and in the end he had a fabulous four year tenure and all the rest of it will just vanish into the ether. And one more thing, Brandon, I just don't think those guys were on the page on the same page that much throughout the year, dusty and Dana. And it, it really proved it to me when he was on the flagship talking about if Michael Brantley would be moved up to hit second in the postseason here. And Dana Brown was like, no, no way. They're going to keep him down around fifth or sixth. And, and that's that's where they're going to use him. And and then the, the, that very day, <laughs> Michael Brantley was penciled in to hit second. So it's just, it doesn't seem like these guys are, are really talking about this stuff and really in agreement on a lot of these things. Where Dusty's talking about, I'm waking up from dreams and my lineup changing. This doesn't sound like a, you know, an effort where people are collaborating together. It sounds like that was Dusty's call. And if he had a weird feeling about a lineup or some dream, whatever Dana Brown had to say about it, he didn't really care. And, and that's okay, but it just shows you, like, it doesn't feel like this was really a, a team effort as much when it comes to setting lineups and, and doing the manager stuff. And Dusty didn't sound like he wanted any input on that. Yeah, so there was some discord but we're not trying to paint any sort of picture of overall dysfunction and, and how did the Astros not unravel completely? You know, what ultimately did them in from another World Series appearance, seven-game series with the Rangers, they got one quality start, and they lost it. Right? Verlander in game one. Uh, Javier gave them a good start in game three, but the definition, he didn't make it through six innings, so it's not a quality start, and all the rest of them were stinky. Uh, so, you know, other than a specific decision here, a specific decision there, comes down to the player performance and the Astros collectively, their players were not as good as they'd been in over any of the, uh, the five prior full seasons. And even the roster in 2020 was still loaded. It's just the, the results there over 60 games uh, were not there. Um, so Dusty can leave proud and honorable. You know, there may be little things that you'd say, well, he could apologize for that or tactically he was wrong with that. But, but overall, it was uh, uh, quite a final chapter to his managerial career. 